Hi boys and girls, today we're going to talk a little bit more in our math lesson about how arrays can help us figure out math facts that we don't know. And we're going to start by pretending a little bit that maybe we're having a program in the gym and Mrs. Aluzzi has asked us to help set up chairs. And she has asked us, if you look here, uh, five rows of chairs with four chairs in each row. And I got this handy little tool I'm going to use to help us picture that. So we want five rows, except I don't want to see that yet. Okay, so we want five rows. One more. So there's five rows. One, two, three, four, five. And we want four in each row. Right now we've got one. And we want two, three, four. So we have done what Mrs. Aluzzi asked. And we made five rows. And we put chairs, four chairs, in each row. Now, I want you to think for a minute and tell me, can you think of a number model that will go with this group of chairs that we've made? Well, we've got five rows, and we're working on multiplication, of course. And how many chairs are in each, in each row? Four. And we're going to solve that. Now, maybe you know five times four. One of the cool things is, is that whenever we've got five in a problem, we can skip count by fives, right? So let's do that. Five, 10, 15, 20. And that is our answer, that 5 times 4 is 20. So we have set up 20 chairs. Okay? Now, let's take that a little farther. Now, we're going to keep pretending and Mrs. Aluzzi comes up and he, she says, oh my goodness, another group of people came in. We have our number model of 5 times 4 is 20. And she said, a mom and a grandma and two kids just came in. So we are going to need to add another group of chairs. So we do that. Isn't that magic? So five groups of chair or five rows of four chairs was 20. We figured that out. And if we add another group of four, it's like 20 plus four. So what would five, six groups of four chairs be? It would be 20 plus four. And we're going to say then that that would be 24. If you don't know, um, you can think there's the 20, 1, 2, 3, 4. That would be another way to think of it. So now, let's do a new number model. And I think I'll write in purple this time. I'd like to change it up a little bit. So now, we need a new number model. And that is that we have six chairs. I'm sorry, six rows of chairs. One, two, three, four, five, six. And there's still four in a row. And if you look back over here, we said 20 plus the four more chairs is going to give us a total of 24 chairs.
pretty cool, huh? So what this is called is that five times four, which is a rather easy fact to figure out, is called a helper fact. And we can use that helper fact. Oh, I know five times four is 20, or I can count five, 10, 15, 20. And then if I add another group, then I know I'm going to have to add just four more to it. And now I know what six times four is. I'm wondering um, if that makes sense to you. I'm hoping that it does. All right, so we're going to go to the next slide. And this time, we've been making jam. Should that be what we say? Ooh, I think that sounds like a good idea. We're making jam. And it says, make a picture to show two rows of jars with seven jars in each row. Well, two rows. That's not what I wanted that to do. Let's, let's go back up here. I'm going to use this. Mm, that's not going to do it for me. So I'll just go ahead and do it that way. We're going to have two as our first number because we have two rows. And then we want to have seven in a row. So I'm going to pull this seven over. Here it's looking good now. All right, so there's my two times seven. Two rows of jars and seven in each jar or in each row. Now, it is also pretty easy for most of us to count by twos. So to find the answer to two times seven, two rows with seven in each jar, we can count by twos, right? Skip count. So let's do that. Two. Four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. And they even wrote our number model for us already. We said that two times seven is fourteen. Two groups of seven is fourteen. Now, let's say that we we're still making more jam and we're going to add another row. So now we have three. So what we can do is we can say I added one more group of how many jars? Seven. And so I can think 14 plus seven more is going to get me to 21. So three groups of seven is 21. Maybe you can skip count by threes, three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21. Or you can think, well, the first two rows were 14 and 14 plus 7 would be 21. So our new number model, if we're going to write a number model again, we're going to say that our new number model would be, and I'm going to put it over here where it's a little bigger, is that when I have three rows and ah, silly. I don't want that to do that. And I'm sorry, I'm going to make that into a seven just to save time. Seven in each row equals 21. 
So as I said again, our helper fact is the 2 times 7 is 14. And if we can count by 2's 7 times, we get 14. And if we add another row of 7, we add 7 to, to 14, we get 21. Those are called helper facts. And helper facts can sometimes make it a little bit more easy for us to figure out a um, multiplication problem. Now, just as we can add rows, we can also subtract rows. So, I want to look at an example of subtracting a group. So, we're back to our rows of chairs, aren't we? We're back to the gym. We're done making jam for now. And we're back to the gym. And again, we're going to go back to the original five rows of chairs with four in each row. Okay, so let's get our five rows. One, two, three, four, five. And we have four in each row. Let's remember what that number model was again. Five. Oops, I got to get my pencil working, don't I? Let's write in green this time. So I have to have five times four equals, who remembers, 20. 5, 10, 15, 20. Okay, so now that's that same situation, but now let's see what happens. Mrs. Aluzi comes up and she says, four of those people aren't coming, so we have too many chairs and we're really crowded in here the way it is. And so... We, we know that we've got our 20 chairs set up, but now she says, I want you to take four away because four people aren't coming. So we take four away. Five rows of chairs with four in each row was 20. And then if we have 20 and we take four away, now how many do we have? 20 minus 4 is going to give us 16. So there, to help us, we had our helper fact again of 5 times 4. And we used subtraction and took one group away. And so now, let's get our new number model. And our new number model is going to be that now we have four chairs or four rows of chairs and we have four in each row. So 20 minus 4 because we took that group of four chairs away is going to be 16. So 5 times 4 is a great helper fact if we need to add a group or if we need to take a group away. Let's look at one more example for you. I had to draw these beautiful ones. I bet you're saying, I knew that, Mrs. Van Skyock. I could tell that you drew them. Well, let's look here. It says, suppose that you do not know the answer to 4 times 7. That is kind of one of those that kids kind of get tripped up, um, tripped up on a little bit. So um, we're going to take a helper fact, again, that has a 5 in it, because we're good at counting by 5s, I think, and do 5 times 7. 
So I've got one, two, three, four, five going down. And I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven going across. Let's count by fives and figure out the answer. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. So, five times seven is going to be 35. And I'm gonna write that up here. Because I, I might even have that fact memorized. If not, I can count by fives. All right, so the same thing. Now we're thinking, but we wanted to find out four times seven. Well, that's one less group, isn't it? Four groups of seven instead of five. So again, if we cross off this group right here, now we've got one, two, three, four groups with seven in it. And that would be the same as saying 35, which is five times seven. And I'm gonna subtract one group of seven. And when I do that, and I know some of you are still struggling on borrowing, but I'm really hoping that we're continuing to work on it. I can't take seven from five, so I come over here and I take a group of 10 from the three. The three becomes a two. I had 10 plus the five that are already here. So now I have 15. 15 minus seven is eight. And then two, and there's nothing to subtract. So my new answer is 28. If I wanted to, I could go through and count every one of those, couldn't I? And I'm not gonna take time to do that, but I would get 28. So let's fix our fact here. Four times seven, it's supposed to pop up. Well, I'll just write it, is going to be good old 28. So today I hope that you have seen that you can use a fact that you know, and we call that a helper fact, and we can add to it or subtract from it, and we can figure out facts that we didn't know before. Keep working on your facts, guys. It is so important that you practice them, that you use flashcards, that you get on the um, games that I've told you about and the exercises that I've shown you and IXL and all of the things that I've suggested that you use and that you get those multiplication facts learned because I'm telling you it will make your life so much easier when you have those memorized. As you move on through third grade math and fourth grade math and on, you'll use them all the way through college. So that is our lesson for today. And I am going to give you a little activity sheet to do. So please make sure that you practice what we just learned. Okay? Thank you.